In today's video, we're going to revisit Raiders of the North Sea and teach you how to beat Death and Glory, mission number three in the campaign, here today on Legendary Tactics. So it had been a while since I'd played Raiders uh, of the North Sea. Uh, just uh, so many games uh, out there to play at the moment and not enough time, but um, I really do like this game. I think it's very... It's a very clever design, and uh, it's a lot of fun to play. So this mission, um, the thing that makes it unique is that you gain one victory point for every uh, crew member that uh, goes to Valhalla via uh, a Valkyrie. So um, now in terms of gameplay, honestly, I don't think it changes. Uh, I think the game itself doesn't uh, need to change as far as your gameplay goes. I think you just uh, take that as a bonus and you just uh, win the game by normal means uh, because it's not, uh, uh, you know, enough of a game changer. I mean, I suppose it could be in a close game, um, but uh, but other than that, it's 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 no different than maybe uh, keeping some crewmates around because you get victory points at the end of the game or something like that. So um, and in general, it's uh, not worth one victory point to sacrifice to a Valkyrie. Uh, just to get, uh, you know, to sacrifice a crew member just to get a victory point doesn't seem like a fair trade-off to me in most cases. Um, certainly nothing to build a strategy around. So anyway, I take some uh, uh, some uh, money and uh, I take some uh, crewmates as well. I'm going to give myself a variety of choice here. Um, now, these missions actually are uh, a decent little challenge, especially if you're newer to the game. Um, I've uh, I had played this uh, before and uh, found it a surprisingly tough to beat more than <laughs> more than I expected uh, but I'm gonna show you how to uh, to win here and I think at least part of it is um, that I was able to get uh, rating very early and I don't know whether it was a fault of the AI or what it was I did play some cards to disrupt their strategy a bit um, so it may have been something to do with that the um but I, I just wanted to make sure that i got my crew up and running get some provisions and just start raiding as quickly as possible uh, especially using the uh the long house um you know if there's opportunities there um, but uh, as the missions progress as you know you need to keep some gold on hand typically you always need provisions so um, i wanted to um, do what I could to maximize uh, my flexibility as far as going on raids. So um, I was able to uh, uh, just uh, with these um, characters here, I've got my one crewmate. Um, so far, I'm happy to hire uh, as many uh, crewmates, just whatever, <laughs> you know, I don't, I'm not that picky. I'll kind of hire pretty much anyone as long as they have some combat strength. Um, because all the abilities are good. There's no real, really bad characters in my opinion. They're they're all good for various reasons. So um, you just need to uh, to keep that in mind. So just looking at the uh, at the spots or the harbors there that uh, we can raid. Just want to make sure we've got enough um, enough of an opportunity um, to uh, to reinforce. I, what I what I'm actually working towards is to be able to do multiple raids in a row. Um, I hired that Gravedigger guy because uh, uh, if I'm going to sacrifice uh, a unit at some point early on to uh, to a Valkyrie, um, then at least I get not only a victory point but a gold out of it as well. So, um, so uh, I'm looking just yeah, basically just to build up my uh, my strength here, and uh, so we've got. Uh, Oh, and I and I use the uh, the ability of that that guy to gain provisions. Um, so now whether I get <clears throat> some money or I get some provisions, it's all good. Uh, I don't mind. And uh, in this case, I was getting a lot of provisions, which I was very happy uh, to do that. I don't know why the AI sacrifices provisions so easily. I find they're the most. A lot of times they're a real pain to get. <laughs> so um, so immediately I, I saw. Okay, look, I can I can raid here. Um, and uh, I don't even have that much strength, but I don't need it. Um, and so um, if I could pull off a, you know, a couple raids here, even one which involved a, uh, a Valkyrie, I can, um, I've got a, 
a sacrificial victim to Valhalla. So, um, so I'll take that. Uh, uh, we'll take that stuff that seems to me to be the best one out of the gate and I get a great uh, a totem or token there uh, as well which gives me uh, the ability to ramp up provisions um, a little bit faster than my opponents which is great um, and uh, yeah so it's just a matter of uh, seeing how many raids we can do here how much loot we can get uh, my opponents begin a raid, begin raiding now as well. So I'm, I want to make sure that I'm staying ahead of all this, uh, you know, sort of like an arms race, I guess you could say. Um, and I had the, the provisions um, that I, I had to, you know, the one provision I needed three crew members to attack the, uh, the one harbor there in the middle. So having the, uh, the gray token boosting up my provisions like that was very handy. And uh, I was a bit unsure as to what token to uh, pick up here, uh, but because uh, there's really, I could take money, I could take uh, crew members, and in the, in the end, I decided to go for some more crew, just give myself some more options. Um, I think it's always good to have as many options in the crew section as possible, and not only for uh, hiring them at the barracks, but also for eventually exchanging them at the treasury uh, if I've got a lot of expendable cards, I can convert them into gold, which can then be used to sustain my rating, um, which is always a, a good thing. So, um, so, but but again, my goal here is uh, as much as possible to be rating, and I'm looking at the the big picture here uh, and what I need, um, and uh, just confirming that uh, every crew member that goes to the Valkyrie is uh, worth something at least. So I'm going to hire another, really the only one I can afford, <laughs> So, but that's fine. Um, it's another combat uh, strength for me. And I'm kind of, of course, looking to jump on any spot which uh, where I can um, gain, uh, you know, gain some material without uh, having to uh, lose a crew member to the Valkyrie. And I fortunately was able to pick up that gray token and get uh, two provisions uh, from uh, from that space again, which was awesome. So that uh, sets me up for a couple of uh, raiding opportunities here. Um, now all my opponents are raiding now, so uh, there's sort of more limited uh, spaces. Um, but uh, and interestingly, my opponent actually goes for that space where uh, they lose a crew member. And it, I don't know, in the early game, I I mean, especially in the early game, I find the the loss of a crew member can set you back more than a lot. You know, if you don't have the the, the ability to hire someone back right away because you haven't had a lot of time in the game to build up some resources, it can be pretty inconvenient. <laughs> so I'm just surprised that, uh, you know, I, I guess you, you know, you have to do what you have to do. But as much as possible, you want to avoid the... Uh, uh, the Valkyries. Now, I did choose to raid this one in particular. I wanted the gold, uh, and uh, the reason why I was comfortable doing that was because I had the Grave Digger in hand, and and actually I was thinking more in terms of I gotta eventually get this Grave Digger out of my uh, crew, and so I thought, well, I'll take I'll bite the bullet now on that one, and and we'll get uh, and we'll get some replacements because the Grave Digger is fine, but no combat strength and ultimately the the combat strength is what's going to get you the points as you begin to raid outposts and monasteries and whatever so um, it's going to um, you know you need to bulk up at some point and so uh, I was able to uh, you know pick up uh, some pretty decent uh, I think decent characters um, so with good good strength, there's a couple there that are really, you know, strength four. The, the problem is I just don't have enough, um, I don't have the ability to hire them because I don't have the resources yet. So I'm going to start building up my armor, um, which is something that uh, I think early on in my play of this game, I saw as a, uh, just a, something almost like a, a a backup space or a, or a safety valve you know if you got nothing else to do well get some armor pick that up but i think ultimately <clears throat> armor is something that 
uh, plays into the game to, and, and is worth essentially a lot of points because if it can boost you up to qualify for the next level of victory, then that gives you more points. And so it's a very, very good use of resources. Um, sometimes there are, you know, some like the town hall sometimes and the treasury seems like that safety valve to me where, you know, if you have nothing else better to do, then it's it's fine. <laughs> so um, I'm going to uh, to hire this uh, rough and tough looking guy here. And uh, that gives us uh, the three uh, crew members, uh, which is great. Uh, it gives me some options. There's some there's some harbors there that are just unplayable with two Valkyries. I can't see anyone um, actually making use of that uh, space. I guess again in desperate times perhaps but to lose two crew members unless you got a lot of if unless you have two grave dig diggers in hand or something like that I just can't see that being uh, or in your crew I can't see that being uh, a valuable move but I guess again if, if you're desperate and you need you know something I but I just if I'm after gold or whatever I'd much rather just trade in some cards to to get that um, so now I'm beginning to look at the um, the outposts and uh, doing a, that rating early now I'm short of provisions in that case just by by one um, and I'm short of crew members on the <clears throat> the one uh, outpost or sorry no that was the, that one I was able to do sorry and so um, <clears throat> I, I could have potentially, if I'd rolled a six, I could have gotten the top tier of, of victory, but um, but I really need to build up my strength. I'm, I was just thinking that if I can raid early though and take away those easy uh, outposts, even if I don't get the, the, the best total for victory points, um, it's just gonna make it that much harder when uh, my opponents rank upward and start to look to the outposts uh, for resources. So I, my goal was to, uh, as much as possible, uh, to raid and uh, take out those easy outposts, and again with the monasteries as well. So um, here I'm going to hire um, this guy here. Now he gives one uh, a bonus of one less provision required for the monastery. And the Huntsman is one less provision required for the outpost. So that is uh, really good for uh, keeping the requirements of provisions down. Um, I realize I will have to sacrifice crew members uh, at some point, but I'm quite happy to run with this crew for as long as I can. And we'll see how far uh, we get. But that was my, my overall idea was, you know, let's if we can set up multiple raids and set up uh, you know, uh, basically take out all the easy outposts and monasteries, uh, then I would work from there. So um, as you can see, the victory point totals are pretty tight here. Um, it's seven to seven to five. So no one's really jumped out ahead. Um, and I'm looking to, um, you know, <laughs> it, 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 actually I'm, the, my opponents are already beginning to raid the outposts here. So um, and they they're they're very similar in uh, in combat strength, but um, they are beginning to uh, make an impact there. So uh, the pressure's on. I got to make sure that uh, that I'm staying ahead of uh, that as much as possible, and hope hope that uh, I can put them in a position where they have to face too many Valkyries to uh, you know to it's going to slow down their momentum. So I'm uh, looking to. Uh, uh, to raid but I, I forgot i need the uh at least a gray token to raid the outposts so uh, i'm gonna have to spend one more turn back at the village uh and uh so we'll <laughs> we'll be forced to do that but it's a good overview of of the resources and so forth uh available there's uh definitely uh some great a couple of locations there which i want to hit first if i can so i'm going to uh rejig my my plan here. Now I've got, uh, this was my idea to get some extra provisions, was to play the mercenary and see if I could get the uh, AI opponents to give me provisions if possible. And I'm fortunately was able to pick up the gray token from the mill and get another couple provisions that way. Um, and uh, this uh, green gave me a, a, a provision and uh, in the end, so did blue. 
so that was perfect um, so now I have I've got some gold uh, stored up I've got some provisions stored up so now I can start uh, doing some consecutive raiding here uh, which will be which will be great um, so I'm just you know I guess there's really uh, I guess the 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 one with uh, two cows there uh, not really the most attractive target but uh, it is extra victory points so um, if I'm, I'm just gonna go for this one and uh, see see how this uh, affects things but uh, we'll you know I've got uh, a, a bit of strength and I get a decent roll and that gives me the top tier of, uh, of victory I think in general if, if you can obviously if you can secure the higher tier of victory points that's obviously valuable uh, but it, even if you have a good like 50 50 chance of getting the higher tier I think that's worth that's worth going for uh, a roll of you know eight or higher uh, in this case was not a uh, crazy uh, difficult odds to to hit it's you know maybe in the 40 percent range of uh, probabilities uh, here's a, a snapshot so if you've got a decent probability you may as well go for it especially if it removes an easy uh, target uh, from them so um, I was looking at even stepping it up and uh, going for um, one of them the uh, fortresses uh, at the at the end here um, and yes it's a it's a higher cost in in gold and arguably I probably should have taken out that easy outpost first uh, but I thought well you know what my at this point I was actually thinking about uh, forcing a game end as quickly as possible and of course if there's one fortress left then that's going to do that so uh, that's going to be something that uh, is going to uh, put the pressure on my opponents and I'm ahead in victory points uh, especially over blue blue is not doing much of anything and so I did lose that outpost that was that was uh, an oversight uh, on my part um, but um, I think I'm in a good position overall for um, for keeping um, you know keeping this momentum going. Still got a lot of provisions, so I'm looking for targets. And uh, with another white uh, totem in hand, gives me another uh, option here for uh, some victory points and uh, get a decent roll, <clears throat> but not good enough. And Potentially, uh, arguably, it may have been better at this point to just uh, hang around the village, go, you know, build up some armor at the armory, maybe add another crew member, uh, and that sort of thing. I'm also eyeing the longhouse uh, and seeing if there's opportunities. I mean, I've got a lot of cattle in uh, in my resource bank there, so uh, there's some opportunities there to potentially uh, trade them in for victory points. And it's funny because just as I was thinking that the AI started making moves on the longhouse. So I thought that was kind of interesting uh, because uh, they, the AI was obviously thinking the exact same thing as I was at that moment. So, um, but I do need more resources and I'll, uh, or sorry, more provisions um, so that I can continue my raid rating and, uh, and I'm going to need more gold ultimately, which, uh, which is interesting because uh, gold, you know, I think by design, the gold feels like it's a bit of a short. There's a bit of a shortage of it as the game progresses, and that's why you have options at the mill and options at the treasury to to get gold, uh, because it's uh, it's something that once the the opportunities run out on the raid side of things, then there is uh, uh, really it's hard to get. So, um, so I was happy to take the five victory points there. Um, to give up a bit of money and and a bit of you know some some resources um, was uh, was fine by me. There's some very unattractive uh, monasteries and outposts there. Uh, I think you know to to do a raid. I mean, I guess you get the victory points, but uh, that one monastery where you get it just a single head of cattle um, and you have a have to face a Valkyrie, uh, even with the game's bonus of an extra victory point did not seem worth it uh, to me so i'm going to keep boosting my armor i want to make sure that uh, if i've got nothing else better to do that i'm improving my combat strength um, so i can potentially get more victory points 
But again, I'm still eyeing this to my, my basic ideas. I want to, uh, to end the game as quickly as possible. It was interesting because as I'm looking at the resources of my opponents, they certainly have enough to do a raiding, uh, a fair amount of raiding. But for whatever reason, they got really went, tied up. The algorithm got really tied up in um, getting a, you know, more, more uh, going to the silversmith uh, or to... Uh, the mill and building up provisions that <laughs> that weren't uh, necessary. Um, anyway, I grabbed that uh, those victory points there as well, uh, and uh, I needed some gold, so I uh, grabbed that. That was the only thing holding me back from a raid. Um, and my opponents uh, again just kind of, you know, they're trading in. I guess maybe that's their strategy. Is is their <clears throat> they have a lot of resources, so why not use the longhouse uh, if there's some attractive options there for victory points but i mean ultimately raiding is is what uh, gives you the big points in general and uh so that was an easy victory for me there but i did have to sacrifice uh one of my crew members or sorry that was blue sorry that was uh blue sacrificing a crew member there and so uh there's you know there's a bit of attrition now going on with the valkyries and the decision making is a little bit harder the payoff is not as attractive for some of these raids uh you're gonna have to lose uh, uh, uh one of your crew members for sure so um just trying to f math it out now and trying to figure out what's the best use of my uh my combat strength and in terms of resources that i get so uh, i decided to go for this one this one should be an easy Six, uh, six victory points, which it was. And uh, so that uh, was fine. I, I'm going to uh, get rid of the uh, the Avenger, I think. Or sorry, the Huntsman this time. And uh, keep my combat strength up as uh, high as possible. Um, but uh, it's... And, and I managed to pull ahead. I mean, I'm at 42 uh, victory points. And my opponents are at 24 and I'm hoping that the the game can end as soon as possible. We can lock in the victory um, because uh, the longer the game goes, the more opportunities my opponents have to score, obviously. So um, so in this case, uh, my opponent raided without a ton of combat strength. They got a very average roll and got the lower tier of victory, which is fine by me. Um, but uh, I have a pretty reasonable lead. It was around this time I started to feel more confident in being able to to win this um especially as uh i felt i'd done some damage in the uh in able in being able to uh in, in taking out some of the fortresses on the, on the far side uh it was really just a matter of getting enough gold and enough crew members to uh to take out the fortresses uh enough fortresses to uh, to force an ending to the game as quickly as possible as not only does that give victory points with raiding you always have to remember that if you raid a territory even if you get the low tier of victory points uh those are victory points that are also denied your opponent uh out of all the available victory points in the in the in the, in the game in the pool that's available uh, then you deny those to your opponents, which is just as valuable as the points you actually score. Um, picked up some more um, silver and uh, looking to uh, max out my crew to uh, start uh, just again to give me the maximum flexibility on my uh, on my rating. Uh, my opponents are taking, a, you know, again using the longhouse, which is fine. Um, nothing wrong with that, but uh, I'm not. I'm actually in a pretty good spot overall <coughs> to be able to, um, you know, to do some more raiding and uh, just at this point, just shoring up my uh, my uh, my crew and and making sure that I've got uh, the resources that I need. But again, gold is the, is the thing that's short at the moment. That's what I need more of, and so I'm essentially just at this point i've got the crew in place um and i've i just need uh the gold and maybe some provisions uh to be able to do multiple raids but um but overall i'm kind of setting up for my end game here and uh 
um, hoping to force because uh, I'm sure my opponents are going to raid at some point and uh, so it's going to be pretty useful um, so just taking a look we've got a we've got four fortresses left so if I can potentially do two of those uh, I think that'll be good now they do require a lot of gold and a lot of crew members as well um, not so much so worried about the provisions part but it is something that needs to be uh, managed and I do need to figure out how that's going to to work so I did need to kind of math this out a little bit and figure out huh, what's the best uh, use of my uh, of my play now the, the treasury is the easiest one to to get provided you've got the cards now I have the one crew member there, there that provides an extra card when you go to the gatehouse which was uh, which was great that that I think really powered uh, powered me through is uh, just having more cards in hand whenever I took the gatehouse action meant that the treasury was that much easier to uh, to convert uh, and get more cards uh, from that so um, and here I'm kind of looking like oh geez what do I what do I need I, I didn't have great combinations for the longhouse um, I did not want to sacrifice any gold for the longhouse but uh, I had extra cattle so I thought well at least this is an, another way to get provisions um, and uh, to get as many of those as possible as quickly as possible and so my opponents are doing more of their kind of endless setting up um, because if I were the, the silversmith I'd be looking to raid with uh, all those provisions and all that gold but that's fine I'm happy to uh, just hang out at the village with them and here I make my my one conversion um, just dropping a couple cards uh, here and I'm looking at uh, uh, which ones would be the uh, the useful one I mean again there's no <clears throat> every crew member in this game is useful um, so there's not you know it just depends on what you need at the time so um, but with the the additional draw at the gatehouse you can be a little bit more liberal with your discards and just uh, hang on to yeah the, you know whoever might might be useful now or in the future um, so uh, anyway I was just uh, looking to um, get everything lined up here I need more gold obviously that was uh, a, uh, a big thing for me at this point and uh, with me now if you look at the victory uh, points all of a sudden uh, my opponent's at 36, which, I mean, isn't sur isn't uh, insurmountable, but uh, within a raid anyway of uh, ca causing a problem here. So um, I, I felt I really need to needed to, to hurry uh, as far as uh, uh, getting more uh, getting a, those raids in as quickly as possible. So um, I was looking for uh, for gold. I was looking for. <coughs> um, you know the the well i really just needed the gold to start uh, my rating now i'm just uh looking through my options here i'm gonna do the town hall that's why i was reading through the cards just one more time to remind myself and uh i really do like that mercenary ability i think it's uh it it it's puts you know you can use a huntsman and just get stuff but i like the uh the mercenary there because it forces the opponent to give up uh, their uh, provisions especially uh, and and yeah you, you're giving up some combat potential combat strength and some value that way but uh, I just picked up two provisions so I'm well set on provisions and I just need gold now that's the only thing I need to uh, to continue to move forward and there really wasn't any attractive rating options uh, to get that gold uh, I'm not going to sacrifice two crew members for uh, one gold and a and a head of cattle <laughs> it's just not worth it so so now I'm all set up I'm just looking to uh, maximize my uh, my pickup here and I decided to just take some take some um, well I kind of I was deliberating here do I take silver do I take provisions I ended up uh, taking the silver and uh, so it's uh, a relatively close game still um, especially uh, if my opponents ever do uh, get the uh, the opportunity to raid and they are in a position to and this was where it was kind of weird because they just seem to be 
stocking up on silver <laughs> and and I had played this scenario a few times and I've lost this scenario uh, before so um, this is one of the reasons why I thought I needed to race a bit to the end uh, to uh, make sure that I was able to um, <laughs> I was able to uh, uh, finish the game off while I was ahead and so uh, once again I'm weighing the options here and I think <clears throat> really the 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 fortress that I'm considering um, looks like it's the best because the gold uh, comes back. Yes, I've got to sacrifice a, a crew member. I'm going to have to hire someone, but um, but either way, it's kind of six of one half dozen of the other in that sense. But I, you know, this one costs me two gold. I get one of them back. Um, and I managed to pull off mid tier victory uh, points, which puts me, you know, reasonably ahead. And uh, this is. Uh, the point where I'm just looking um, at all the options and uh, in the end uh, I decided to sacrifice the uh, the Avenger uh, and uh, force my opponent to lose a crew member which I thought was uh, a great uh, a great ability again just slowing down my opponent's momentum making it hard for them to to raid so uh, blue is gonna have to likely uh, hire uh, someone at the barracks, which again just disrupts their their game plan, and if they hire at the barracks, it gives me a token there that I can pick up to replace my um, to replace my my crew member. Now, as it turned out, um, I didn't have that uh, that option of picking up uh, a token from the barracks and getting that free recruiting action, so I had to rethink. And I I would have loved to have picked up from the gatehouse first and then played into the barracks but uh, I'm gonna have to do all this in uh, in reverse because uh, I've only got one card as uh, a backup and I need a full crew to get to those last uh, the last fortresses so just trying to weigh the options I'd love to boost my uh, armor at the armory but that's not gonna work so I figured well I'll just take some silver and uh, it gives me some money for next time so I can uh, can hire these guys um, and I really at this point in the game having a warlord uh, in hand that's extra victory points which is uh, which is very good so that was the one I was eyeing to bring on board the crew and because uh, the fortress is actually uh, if I remember correctly only have one Valkyrie each so uh, while it slows you down um, you're able you're not sacrificing uh, crew members and giving up on those uh, victory points uh, at the end of the game so um, so again looking I needed uh, uh, some money um, but more importantly I needed uh, needed uh, to hire my uh, my crewmate and I do need more gold um, in general so um, depending on which ones uh, which uh, fortress gets raided next so but I've got decent combat strength nothing likely it's gonna it's, it's certainly good enough for a mid-tier victory at the fortress level, and uh, I'm fine with that. Again, when you when you uh, raid, you're not only scoring the points for yourself, but you're denying your opponents uh, that. And once again, the AIs were just kind of building resources in the village. I was uh, you know, very surprised at that, um, but I was happy to see it. I'm going to get some more gold and get rid of a couple of the, the weaker... Um, crew members from my hand and that gave me my gold which is great and uh, so now it's just uh, about what's my what's my best action I thought well if I force my opponent to lose uh, armor um, then Thorier the blue can uh, might potentially miss out on a high tier victory again just hampering 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 as best I can um, and uh, hurting my most uh, obvious opponent. Now, I am almost 20 victory points up at this stage, so uh, I am not in bad shape, especially as the game is going to be ending very soon. Um, we have uh, three fortresses left. I'm going to do uh, that one, which replaces the gold that is lost um, once the victory happens. I managed to squeak out a, <laughs> a mid-tier victory. Um, I won't say it's a lucky roll. I had decent odds on that roll but I'm happy to, to take the uh, the extra victory points and uh, or sorry that was blue sorry doing that sorry they blue took my uh, my spot actually so I had to oh so there there is a spot with two uh, Valkyries there and so I uh, 
had to sacrifice a couple crew members, but at least this forced the end of the game right here. And uh, so, I've, again, I've got reasonable strength um, to take a mid-tier victory. Um, and blue did come fairly close overall, but at this stage, with one fortress left, uh, it's not uh, the end of the world uh, for me to lose crew members uh, because my last turn is uh, likely going to be just looking to the longhouse and uh, you know just ending the game here so um, so I've got a pretty commanding lead at 70 the, that's actually the losing the two crew members to the Valkyries was a nice little bonus there um, I do, again I don't think it's game changing but it's a nice little bonus uh, my opponent's uh, doing the rating trying to rack up as many points uh as uh as they can and green really came on very late uh to this to this uh game to, to be at 42 points at this stage is uh where you're just catching up in the last round is not uh, particularly strong um as i said i i have found especially if you're learning the game uh the ai's you know are they put up a reasonable amount of competition in this one i felt that there was a little more hanging out at the village collecting resources they should have been raiding more aggressively but that's just my perspective um, gonna use the longhouse to grab another five victory points and really put myself out of reach uh, really doesn't matter which which one i pick up here so um, and there's no need to hire anyone so uh, i'm going and i don't have any cards to spend i don't have any ways to boost uh, armor or anything so just taking a taken a token but there's nothing i can do about it so uh, anyway so yeah it doesn't really matter whatever whatever happens sorry i was able to pick up a couple armor there but um, but that's the victory so uh as i said i think uh raiding early as, as quickly as possible uh forcing the end of the game as quickly as possible i think is really the key to this mission and of course the more uh, of your crew members you lose to the Valkyries the better so anyway I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you got some value out of it and uh, hopefully you can make your way through the campaign which is really just a fun yeah, fun little challenge something that's nice to do um, but if you did get some value please take a moment to like comment and subscribe and we will see you here next time on Legendary Tactics <laughs>